Hi and welcome to this week's video. Now that we have good catch, good torso rotation and good top arm connection, it's time to look at the release. When we're paddling, the most powerful part of the stroke is up at the front, near the catch. The further we move away from the catch position, the weaker we become. Therefore, it is important that we get the paddle out of the water nice and early. Most people say that this happens before the hip, and I'd agree with that, but want to look a little bit closer. Okay, so there are some really good reasons why we want to release in front of the hip. Have a look at this. This is our kayak, and this is our torso, and paddle out in front. And here's the square box shape with our arms that we're trying to keep the whole time. Now, when we make the stroke on the right, our torso is going to rotate like this. The paddle moves to this position and our arms stay relatively the same square box shape. And you'll see here that this blade in the water, um, by the time we've rotated as far as we can here, the paddle blade ends up about level with the hip, yeah, with this right hip, and we don't want to go any further than that. If we went further than that with the paddle, what would happen is we would end up behind the hip and the arms then have to move to this funny, funny position which is weaker in our shoulders. So that's the first reason. The other good reason to exit before the hip is to do with blade angle. Let's have a look at a sideways view of a kayak. Here's our torso and head. Now, when we're at the catch, when the paddle is like this, you can see that the blade here in the water, the blue tip on my pen, is, is ready to, to push the boat forward. Okay? As we move further through the stroke, the blade becomes more vertical. This is also good. It's pushing the boat forward, not up or down. But as we come nearer the hip, and even past the hip, you can see that the blade angle is going to change, and we're going to actually end up pulling the boat down into the water or lifting water up behind our, our shoulder and not only is this a waste of energy but also makes, it feel, makes the paddler feel very unstable and this is where paddlers feel like they're going to pull themselves in towards the end of the stroke. So releasing before the hip is a nice rule to follow but it doesn't always work for everyone and it depends on your ability to rotate. I've drawn for you four paddlers here, each taking a stroke on the right. This person has no rotation. See the torso is totally square. So they're going to be releasing right up the front, okay, because they haven't even started the stroke yet. Now I've got a second paddler who can rotate a little bit. This is a lot of people that I see. So their stroke is going to be exiting or releasing before the hip. Now the hip line is this dotted line I've drawn for you at the hip level. And you can see that in order to not break this structure, the release needs to happen now. On the next paddler, you can see that they've rotated much better. Yep. And keeping the same structure, they make it to, to where the hip line is. So they are able to get their, their blade all the way around to the hip um, before they need to release. On our fourth paddler, you can see that they've got a lot of flexibility. They are able to rotate their body right around almost 180 degrees and because of this they are able to keep that strong trunk structure through their arms um, all the way actually past the hip yep. and they are able to maintain a good blade angle good strength through the body and through the arms actually past the hip therefore lengthening the useful stroke so you can see two lessons from this the first one is that rotation is going to be really useful and the next one is don't take the paddle past where you can rotate to. Okay? The temptation is to bend the arms and bring the paddle back past your hip, but most paddlers need to take the paddle out earlier. This is probably you, or this one. So when it's time to finish the stroke and make the release, you need to know. We're trying to release the blade when you reach max torso rotation. This is different for everyone, but normally in front of the hip for most people. Then what you want to do is flick the paddle out to the side. 
so that the blade releases cleanly and we're not pulling water up. Then think about leading with the wrist. So as it's time to take the paddle out of the water, we're going to bend the wrist and feel like someone's got a string on your watch and it's pulling it up to the sky. And this is the best way to get the blade out of the water in a relaxed manner. We're trying to do this without using up excess energy. Once you've got the blade released from the water cleanly, the goal now is to move the bottom arm so that it is the same height as the top arm. And both hands are at shoulder height, ready to make a clean catch on the next side. Okay, so now that you have this information, it's time to go out and paddle, focusing on the release. Experiment with releasing the paddle earlier than you normally do, just so you can feel that change. Most paddlers make the mistake of taking the paddle out too far back. Try and get the paddle out nice and clean out to the side, lead with that wrist, and pause at the top so that you've made sure you've completed one stroke before you move on to catching on the other side. Enjoy.